Have you noticed that in most Christian churches, all the leaders are men? I'm sure you have. It's a fairly easy dynamic to see, especially when we live in a culture that emphasizes equality. So how do we make sense of this? As we begin, I'd love for you to consider your own beliefs regarding women in leadership, both in the home and in the church. So take a few seconds to answer this question. So let's define a couple of key terms related to this discussion. Egalitarianism. This is the belief that there is no distinction between men and women, that God created men and women with complete equality, and this usually means that women can hold any position in the church, including the pastorate. The main scripture used to defend this perspective is Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, all Christians should understand and agree with the sentiment of this verse because it's related to the value of all people, and especially that value toward salvation. All people, regardless of race or gender or economic status or any difference, all people are created in the image of God and have equal value. There is also equal value in regards to salvation, which is what this verse is speaking of. What this verse is not addressing is the role of men and women. See, value is different than function. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, we read, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. In Ephesians chapter 5, we read, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. So the counter view to egalitarianism is complementarianism, which holds these verses as literal and makes claim that God created men to be the leaders in their home and in the church. And so this view holds that men and women were created with the same value, but were given different roles that complement each other. In fact, if we keep reading in 1 Timothy, we see the reason why women were given this command. 1 Timothy chapter 2, For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. And so there's actually two reasons. God created Adam first, and then he created Eve. Now, God could have created them together. I mean, it seems he did that for every other animal. But for mankind, he made the obvious separation. This wasn't an oops moment. He was establishing the created order. And the second reason was because Eve was deceived first. This doesn't mean that all women are gullible and suspect to sin more than men. All it means is that Eve was. And so God established this as the conditions for the church and for the home based off the created order and the transgressions of the first woman, Eve. God most certainly does not discriminate against anyone. In fact, it could be argued that no one in history did more for women's rights than Jesus. He constantly welcomed all who came and treated women as equals in his life and ministry when his culture did not. These scriptures all designate the intended desire of God's created order. But sometimes this is not the way it's realized. Men have time and time again abandoned their role as leader in the home and in the church, and women have had to step up and lead. There has to be an awareness of what God's intention is with a concerted effort to move toward that standard of living. God loves and values everyone. But he has given us clear instructions for how we should fit together as male and female in both the home and 
in his church.